Thank you. It's really, uh, really nice to be here. Appreciate it, especially when people care enough to do a conference like this. Many churches would just would thumb their noses at, at something like this, and it's one of the reasons that we're in as much trouble as we are right now in terms of people knowing what's going on. I actually have been out of the uh, New Age for 31 years. Uh, I wrote my book, The Light That Was Dark from the New Age to Amazing Grace, back in 1992. Moody Press uh, published the book, and their publicity person told me, gee, Warren, um, it's too bad your timing was off on this book, The New Age is Passé. And I said, uh, au contraire. I said, it's growing exponentially, and it's going to keep growing exponentially. But Moody Press got me one radio interview. The Lord got me about 250. And the reason that um, I was able to get on the air, I think, is because the very thing that I was involved in called A Course in Miracles, that was like kind of the climax of everything that I'd been involved in, reputedly new revelation from Jesus to the world in these, in these days of trouble and crisis. Uh, the, the Jesus of the Course in Miracles dictated, spiritually dictated, this three-volume set of books to a woman in New York City who was a professor at Columbia uh, University at the medical college there named Helen Schuchman between 1965-1972. She heard an inner voice that said, this is A Course in Miracles, please take notes. And she did, and that's called Spiritual Dictation. It's, uh, it's you know, metaphysical. It's, uh, it's everything that the Bible warns about in terms of listening to familiar spirits. So the, the Course in Miracles was really, um, I started out in the New Age. I, I wasn't like some kind of uh, profound seeker. Uh, I met a waitress at a downtown restaurant, had her over for dinner one night, and in the course of the evening's conversation, she said, how would you like to see a friend of a friend of mine who's a psychic who's coming in from Canada? And I really didn't. I was from the East Coast. I was conservative, at least in that way. And I said, uh, sure. So I went and saw the psychic. During the psychic reading, she told me all these things about myself. She had no business knowing. She got my attention. I didn't know, you know, I hadn't read the Bible. I didn't know Acts 16, 16, where the uh, psychic at Philippi, you know, was sort of hounding Paul and Silas. You, you might recall that story. Paul, in the name of Jesus Christ, cast the divining spirit, the spirit of divination, out. And uh, as a result, the people that were making their money from the psychic uh, were upset, and they had Paul and Silas thrown in the jail after being beaten. And what did they do? Did they complain and say, what happened? We cast out the spirit in your name. No, they praised God. They sang praises. And that, the whole Philippian jail scene is a result of a psychic being put out of business. But I'm afraid these days, you know, Christians are now being taught to be their own psychic through books like Jesus Calling. Um, it's really sad, and if I've hit a button there, if you're reading Jesus Calling, I will be explaining a little bit more about that. I have a, a DVD, uh, I was at the Berean Call up in Bend, Oregon, and, and one of the talks is a complete talk on Jesus Calling. I go into great detail. If you need that or if you need that for a friend, uh, I've got that, but I won't be able to do that today. I will be speaking at Calvary Chapel uh, tomorrow, and I'll be speaking on that, on that book. So wh why do I say that? Well... In the book Jesus Calling, on page 199, Jesus tells Sarah Young, the author, I am above all as well as in all. That's the bottom line of the New Age. If you want to put the, the New Age in a nutshell, it's God in everyone and everything. And 2 Corinthians uh, 2.11 lest Satan get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. But unfortunately, we have been. And those of us that are trying to warn are sort of uh, put on the out, outside of the church, and we're the negative ones the pastor mentioned about being divisive. Well, heresies must come, and heresies prove where you're at. And I think that books like The Shack, books like The Circle Maker, uh, books like Jesus Calling are proving whether you really have a love of the truth or if you just kind of want to feel good. Because those books kind of, they give you a spiritual experience. But one of the things that I learned in the New Age is that the devil can make you feel good about things that are bad, and he can make you feel bad about things that are good. I had a free ride when I was in the New Age. Everything just seemed like it was meant to be. 
Uh, in my book, I talk about all these synchronistic experiences where it just had to be God. You know, a book was put in my hands. At the, you know, I'll give you an example within the church. Uh, and th this is a story that I was told. Somebody uh, was told at work that The Shack was a really good book. Then that afternoon, somebody else told them the same thing. And then that night, uh, the aunt of this person called and said, have I got a book for you? So I go, oh, wow, it's meant to be. You know, I'm supposed to read The Shack. Well, meant to be by whom? You don't hear the word temptation too much out there anymore. It's kind of a word that's gotten lost. But there's temptation, and temptation has come into the church, and the sad thing today is that we're having to do our witnessing within the church. We're having to keep people from falling away. It's like that needs to almost happen before we go out and, and witness to others because we're losing people. And that's exactly what it said in Scripture. It said, you know, that in Second Thessalonians that there would be a great falling away. Things would wax worse and worse. We're being told by Christian leaders that things are getting towards revival time. God's going to send this massive revival. I don't see that in Scripture at all. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite, massive deception. Jesus said, and the, the scripture was, I think, mentioned by both speakers last night, in Matthew 24, 3 to 5, when asked, what will be the sign of your return and the end of the world, the end of the age? Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That's exactly what I was taught in the New Age, that I was a part of Christ. Now, we've got a, a Christian, quote-unquote, leader by the name of Leonard Sweet, who says that, I'm not God. God's God, and I'm not him. But then when you look at his teachings, he basically says that God is in everything. Interestingly, in Leonard Sweet's case, um, he, in his book, Soul Tsunami, uh, written in 1999 with a front cover endorsement by uh, Rick Warren, he says, Sweet says, to survive in the postmodern culture, you need to learn to speak out of both sides of your mouth. Now, he was being cute, but this is what I've noticed. That this is what they do. They'll say one thing and do another. And what were Jesus' strongest words for the, for the Pharisees of his time? Hypocrites. Two-faced. Paul talked about those that are double-tongued. Um, James talked about those that are double-minded twice. And in Psalm 12, uh, David talked about those who have a double heart. It doesn't matter what you say, it's what you believe in your heart. We have Christian leaders today that really believe that they have a special take on Christianity and that there's a new Christianity, there are new Christians emerging. And what were we told in Revelation? What's emerging from the sea? The beast. I don't look at it as the emerging church, but as the merging church. It's merging with the world. Um, if you would, uh, I know we all have like different Bibles and stuff, or you can just, uh, I'm going to read this from uh, King James, Isaiah 5. And I think it really captures uh, what we're looking at today. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at, we're looking at wild grapes. I think uh, degenerate plant tears. Uh, there's all sorts of descriptions. When you look through the Bible, and particularly as you go through the New Testament, there's warning after warning about ungodly men who crept in unawares, deceivers, evil workers. I mean, I made a list one day, and I, and I hadn't finished, and it was, it was huge. But yet people are taken in the church, they are taken so much by personalities. We have certain people that have risen to a stage where they have great followings. And one of the main criticisms that I have of Christian leaders today is based on the scripture 1 Corinthians 14, 8. If the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for the battle? We're not being warned about anything except maybe Roger Oakland and Gary Kahn, some of us that are, that's, that's persecution to a lot of the Christian leaders, I think. Now, in particular, and, and this deserves a whole session and we just don't have time today, but contemplative prayer is a counterfeit for meditation. Meditation in the New Age was where we were, you know, we would actually start our meditation sometimes by 
quoting Psalm 46.10, be still and know, and this is how we would say the new age, and know that I am God. Now that's being used to, to incubate hearing a voice from God in the book Jesus Calling and in other books and in passion conferences that are led by well-known people like Beth Moore, um, John Piper, Francis Chan, uh, Louis Giglio. Now, I want to be really careful here because people, they go, oh, are you saying that Beth Moore, you know, all I'm saying is that what they're not doing is really serious. If you watch a passion conference where you've got a whole stadium filled mainly with young people and they're reading scripture and then they're saying, bow your head and wait and see what Jesus would say to you with no warning about deceptive spirits. That's Deceptive spirits are warned about in the Bible to believers. You know, those, the, everything there in the uh, New Testament there about warning about these things is written to believers. I think a lot of Christians think that their sincerity and their faith keeps them from being received. And that's one of the reasons that I think some of these books have gotten as far as they have because they put all the, you put all your trust in Christian leaders. I have yet to hear one major Christian leader acknowledge that the spirit world is active and wanting to get into your prayer life. The only thing I think that I've heard is in Bill Heibel's book on uh, whisper, hearing the voice of God and having the guts to respond is what he says. That's almost intimidation. That's almost like, are you going to pray and, and see what God tells you? You have the guts to do that? The only warning he has in there, he says, make sure that it's not the sushi that you ate last night. Well, make sure it's not a deceiving spirit, a la 1 Timothy 4.1, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter day some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We've had people that have contacted us that have realized that they were reading Jesus Calling instead of their Bible, and they felt like Jesus was going to the grocery store, going to their church with them, sitting next to them. There was a spirit involved. And when they finally got it and stopped reading the book and repented, that spirit left. It's very serious. I can only say that in my 31 years in the church, the book Jesus Calling, I think, is the most dangerous book to enter the church, and it seems like it's the nicest. And isn't that the way it works? We're going to see a clip in just a few minutes of Oprah Winfrey. Last night, Gary talked about the Pope and Obama being two huge figures in the world. Well, Oprah Winfrey is a spiritual component for years now. She has introduced just about every New Age teacher that you can imagine for years. She, I know in 1987 she had a show on the New Age movement. And on that program, she said that Jesus didn't just come to teach us about his divinity, but about ours. That was on her program. And now if you say, and somebody did, like, Oprah, well, you're, you're a New Ager, she gets really upset. She says, I'm a Christian. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was flying in yesterday in the United Airlines Hemisphere magazine, uh, they had a whole interview with her because she's just done a series called Belief. And it's all about all the different religions and each one is made to look really good. And the author of the article says, Belief challenges the overly simplistic ways we think about religion and, and spirituality. Watching the subjects of belief wrestle with the majesty and mystery of faith, one is struck by simple yet profound truth. Faith is a journey of many paths, but with a single destination. No matter which path one chooses, what binds people of faith together is the desire to serve a higher purpose than themselves. It's hard to imagine a better guide for such a journey than Winfrey. Throughout her career, she's been an example of an inclusive, all-encompassing spirituality, one that finds meaning in everyday experiences, but that is not tied to any specific doctrine or creed. Oh, yes, it is. Her doctrine is oneness. The atonement in the New Age is at one Everybody is one. When we awaken to our oneness, the New Age says, then we realize that we're all, <coughs> have you heard this word lately? Connected. Connectivity. Connect, connect, connect. We're all one. And when we're all one, there will come a day of planetary Pentecost, says the New Age channelers. And they're all saying the same thing. There's going to be a planetary Pentecost. The whole world's going to light up and it's going to be like holy laughter times a million. If you're not familiar with holy laughter, that was a false revival up in Toronto, Canada, where people would break into fits of laughter, fall down on the floor, bark like dogs. That's now being hailed as one of our present-day revivals, along with Brownsville and Todd Bentley and others. 
Now, isn't it interesting that we're being told by Christian leaders that we're on the edge of one of the greatest spiritual awakenings in the history of the world? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, as we, we'll go through uh, my booklet, uh, Be Still and Know That You Are Not God. Uh, and that, that is exactly right. We have gotten to the stage now where we're letting these things just come at us and we're not standing as, as Pastor John you know, mentioned in his remarks. So I'm going to backtrack to that psychic reading. I'm, I'm following this psychic. I'm amazed that she knows these things about myself. She's got my respect, got my attention. And then all of a sudden there's a whirling sensation over my head. And I, it was the weirdest thing. It was like I was just, it was tingling and all these things. And I'm going, what is going on? And without my saying anything to her, she said, are you aware there's a ball of light over your head right now? And I said, no. What's a ball of light doing there? She said, you have a lot of help on the other side. I said, what's the other side? She said, loved ones that have passed on, angels, spirits that are interested in your welfare. Well, it's interesting, and I'll just interject here. Loved ones that have passed on, that want to help you in your life. We have a pastor in Tennessee, Steve Berger, who is one of the endorsees in the book, The Shack. His son died, at, Josiah died, at tragic, uh, died tragically in an automobile accident just before he was going to college. And Pastor Steve Berger, who is a reputable pastor, he's connected to Calvary, I think he's still affiliated with Calvary, he's saying that his son is in communication with he and his wife and his church, and that there are others around the country that are hearing from Josiah. James Redfield, in his book, The Twelfth Insight, which is a follow-up to his book, The Celestine Prophecy, a number one best-selling New Age book on the New York Times bestseller list, says the very same thing in his novel. In this time of crisis, in this time of extreme upheaval, the other side wants to communicate with us because they have answers. And, and what the answer is, we, don't, we just don't quite get it. Now, if I had sat next to one of you, like on a bus when I was in the New Age, and we talked about Jesus, I would have thought, after you gave me the gospel, I would have thought, you know, this is a really nice person, and they really love the Lord. They just don't quite get it. They don't get it that they are Christ also. That Christ is in everyone and everything. Being saved, if you will, in the new age, is awakening to your inner God, your inner self, and then going out and preaching that and telling others. In other words, you don't need a savior, you save yourself. It's totally backward, and it eliminates what? The cross. I noticed that we're going to be singing the old rugged cross sometime during the day. And I was in um, Winkler, Canada. And right before I came out with a few prepared remarks, I don't usually have too many, uh, they sang the old rugged cross. The old rugged cross in the second stanza is so despised by the world. Well, we sing those lines and we we just kind of like yeah you know and it's just kind of a generic thing and we it's a good hymn makes us feel good to, to 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 affirm our faith the course in miracles jesus that i got involved in i go into great detail in the light that was dark but i will just cut right to the course in miracles the course in miracles jesus used this christian terminology god jesus christ holy spirit a lot of a lot of references to scripture just like jesus calling has a lot of references to scripture and here's what the Course in Miracles, Jesus, these are a few of the teachings, and these are quotes. This is Jesus, not the woman who channeled it. Just like Jesus Calling. People don't realize Jesus Calling isn't Sarah Young, the author. She's saying, I got these messages from Jesus, and I want to share them with you. The Jesus of A Course in Miracles says, a slain Christ has no meaning. Do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. The journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. Now, does that sound like, oh, that's just New Age fluff, or that's Shirley MacLaine running down the beach saying, I am God. That's the breath of Antichrist. What we're looking at, and interestingly, um, I was at a, a church um, several years ago, and they were getting rid of some books that they felt were outdated, and there was this book by Pastor Chuck Smith, the founder of Calvary Chapel, and it was called The Soon-to-Be-Revealed Antichrist. It was written in 1976. On the front cover, it says, The stage is being set. The world and the minds of men are being conditioned for a leader, one who can establish peace and safety in these perplexing times. The Bible predicts these events and describes this man of solutions whose number is 666. Well, that was 1976. 
one year after The Course in Miracles was published. And The Course in Miracles is just one part. We've got so many holes in the dike that Roger and Gary and I could stand up here for hours and just go up through a litany of all the things that are, are wrong. But what I'm hoping to do today, the bottom line, and Gary mentioned this, and it's kind of ironic that I'm speaking on this, you know, global oneness day. And this, this is actually talked about in my book, False Christ Coming, Does Anybody Care? I wrote that back in 2002, right after 9-11. The people that I was warning about as I started my research in August 2001 all showed up after 9-11 saying, our way hasn't worked, we need a new way. They were on Oprah, they had Tom Brokaw interviewed, some Wayne Dyer was, all the New Age leaders just, Deepak Chopra, they were just there, sitting, almost you know, gleefully saying, our way hasn't worked, we need a new way. There's a simplicity in Christ, 2 Corinthians 11.4. There's a simplicity in Christ. There's a simplicity in Antichrist. There's a simplicity in the deception. You don't have to know all the little things that are going wrong. But if you know what the basic program is, for instance, when I read Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life, when I reached page 88 and he said, God who rules all and is above all and in all, something that I've said, God who rules everything is everywhere and is in everything. I went, wait a second, where did he get that? And it was in a New Century Version Bible, one of the new Bibles. And I'd noticed that he had also used the Message Bible by Eugene Peterson as his main Bible. And, and interestingly, Peterson in that same passage, Ephesians 4, 6, if you look it up on the Message, it talks about God being in everything, and then he says, oneness pervades everything you are and think and do. In the wilderness, when Jesus was tempted by the devil, how did he respond? He said, it is written. And then he said it again, it is written. And the devil went, oh, oh, okay. So what does the devil do? He quotes scripture, he quotes a psalm. I think that the devil is now saying, it is rewritten. We have new Bibles. We have Bibles that are so perverse. I'll give you an example. There's one called The Voice, and it's an emergent Bible. Chuck Smith Jr. was involved, Lenny Sweet was involved, names that you may or may not know. But And here's what The Voice compared. I'm going to just do King James first. 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Okay, amen. How about the voice? Instead, grow in grace and in the true knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Anointed One, to whom be all glory now and until the coming of the new age. In your face. The response from Christian leadership? Eh. They've got bigger fish to fry. Leonard Sweet, interestingly, the man who speaks out of both sides of his mouth, quotes Tehar de Chardin. Chardin was mentioned last night, I think, I know by Gary mentioned him, and I, I think uh, um, Roger did too. Pierre Tehar de Chardin is a Jesuit Catholic priest who's long deceased. I think he died in the 50s. And he was actually all but defrocked by the Catholic Church. They wouldn't allow his writings. Chardin is now described by Leonard Sweet as 20th century Christianity's major voice. He gave this away in a book called Quantum Spirituality that Sweet wrote back in like 1991. That's a whole other subject, but the way this thing's going to happen is that quantum physics is going to be used, and this is not the time or the place to try, it's very complicated, but they're going to try to use science, falsely so-called. 1 Timothy 6, 19 to 21 talks about those have erred in the faith because they use science falsely. It's all over the place, from the Dalai Lama to Brian McLaren and the church, they're trying, and Leonard Sweet, they're trying to use quantum physics to show that God is actually in every subatomic particle. Therefore, he is in everyone and everything. Therefore, we are all one. Therefore, all humanity is one. And the answer, I think, that was mentioned by both speakers again last night was Genesis 11, 6. 
What is God's response to oneness? Now that this people is one, nothing that they imagine can be restrained, and he scatters them all over the face of the earth. Look at it this way. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, he said that the way is broad that leads to destruction. The way that leads to eternal life is narrow, and few there be that find it. Folks, what calls itself Christianity is just a shell containing a lot of people who are going the wrong way. I live up in the uh, California mountains, and there was a front page article in the Fresno Bee, and it was written by, uh, let me see if I have it here. Headline, front page, going in the wrong direction. And then it says, it, it just takes one misstep for even the most experienced hiker to go missing. This was in response to the fact that people get lost up in Yosemite and they die. They just keep walking away from the trail and they get lost. And this particular article, I, I, think, the, I think the guy was a Christian, listen to what he says. It's called the Cascade Effect, a catchy name for the way one mistake leads to another. And a quick explanation for how a hiker who takes one step off an established trail is one step closer to trouble. Park rangers and search and rescue experts say that hundreds of hikers take that one wrong step each year. The key, they say, is where their next step takes them, back toward the trail or further down a perilous path. All it takes is to get involved with one false teacher that looks good, and you start following that person and what they're doing. Or you get involved with a book like Jesus Calling and you start becoming involved with Sarah Young and every book that she's written. Not realizing that she's saying that she's hearing from Jesus and then the things that she's writing, some of them contradict the Bible. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Oh, but I just eat the meat and spit out the bones. Wait a second, it says we're not to eat at the Lord's table and the devil's table. A little leaven is leaven. The thing that's important, and, and, and I, forgive me if I've, you know, you know, hurt anybody's feelings by what I'm saying. I think what you're called to do is to check out what I'm saying. Pray about it. Read some of the literature. If anybody here is reading the book Jesus Calling and really likes it, you can take a copy of my book, Another Jesus Calling. You can take the two booklets and just, you know, if you're open enough, mind enough to read them, do that. Because I think what the Lord is doing is He's proving us. Do, we really, do you really love me, Peter? Do you really love me? Oh, but I love Jesus. Well, but do you love the truth? Now, I've heard people say, you've got your truth, I've got mine. Jesus is the truth. So what are they saying? You've got your Jesus, I've got mine. Now, Oprah Winfrey has been pushing The Course of Miracles since 1992. The Course of Miracles, besides the horrific teachings that I just mentioned a minute ago, says that there's no devil, there's no sin, there's no evil. It's all an illusion. Everything is love. Love, love, love. We're hearing that in the church now. Love and mercy, love and mercy. I just, I'm just into love and mercy. Well, what did, in Jeremiah 9.3, he warned about an assembly of treacherous men that were not valiant for the truth. Not valiant for the truth. And it says in 2 Thessalonians that those who fell away fell away because they did not have a love of the truth. They did not have a belief in the truth. I've got a booklet called Truth or Consequences, and what I've done to keep, I think all of us that do this kind of ministry have to do certain things to keep ourselves sane, because you're, I remember it in Calgary, Alberta one time, we were sitting at dinner and a man said, gee, Warren, with all the stuff that you read in the New Age, you must have to read at least two or three hours for every hour that you do with the other stuff, and I kind of went, <laughs> I wish. But I wrote a couple booklets just on the awesome wonder of God's Word, what the Bible says about the Bible, what the Bible says about truth. Um, I, I just did one on rejoicing. We're to rejoice through all of this. But what? Rejoice with trembling. I mean, it's, it's really sad to see what's going on out there. So the Course in Miracles is the, is the platform for Antichrist and is pretty much acknowledged to be the New Age Bible. So on this Global Oneness Day where... Marianne Williamson is one of the featured speakers. She was mentioned last night by Gary. Barbara Marks Hubbard, a key figure in the New Age for years, who they're all channeling Christ. Neil Donald Walsh, Conversations with God, he's channeling God. All these books were bestsellers. And what I noticed when I wrote False Christ Coming, Does Anybody Care? 
is that they're all saying the same thing. This isn't like, oh, there's a million things out there in the New Age. Well, yeah, they all look different, but they've got the same bottom line. If the foundations be destroyed, Psalm 11.3, what shall the righteous do? The idea is to wipe out that foundation. What do we hear from people like Brian McLaren? Well, what if the old, old story isn't the true, true story? That kind of sounds like gen early Genesis where, you know, did God say that? You know, it's like doubting God's word. So the whole idea is that we need a new story. That's one of the themes. We need a new story. We need a story that can bring everyone together. Did Jesus say he came to bring everyone together and to bring peace? No, he said he came to bring division. Now, did he come to be negative and, and, and just to be divisive? No, but he knew that certain people would follow what he had to say and others would take it, change it, you know, reimagine it, reinvent it, you know, all these re's that are out there. There's even a guy that talks about getting re jesus can you believe that one? Okay, so the, the powerful influence that Oprah Winfrey has exerted, I think, is captured in this introduction that she does, and hopefully this clip will work. Um, in 1992, she introduced Marianne Williamson, one of the women at this Global Oneness Day, and she introduced her book, a Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of A Course in Miracles. So remember, Williamson is on that show, and Oprah says during this interview that the principles of A Course in Miracles can change the world. Can we go back just a minute? A Course in Miracles, Jesus says, a slain Christ has no meaning. The journey of the cross is the last useless journey. Do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. But Oprah says in that article that I read in Hemispheres magazine, well, my rock is the church, and I'm a Christian. But, 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 but. People, false teachers, are, are some of the most beguiling people out there. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 5, 30, 31, a wonderful and a horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and my people love to have it so. What is Oprah? She's wonderful in many ways. She does a lot of good works, does a lot of good stuff for everybody. What is she teaching? It's horrible. It's the foundation for the Antichrist who will come come onto the world scene someday, maybe sooner than people think. The foundational teaching of the New Age, the atonement, the at one -ment. and what I talked about in False Christ Coming, does anybody care, is that there will be days of practice where there will be world link-ups. We've already had some of those in the past. There was a, a, a was, uh, what was it, Roger? The harmonic convergence. Harmonic convergence, that was back in the 80s. Barbara Marks Hubbard was there. That was like in the eight. Here she is today at this thing. There will be practice events, but there will come a time the false Christ is channeling through these New Age teachers. There will come a time when all of humanity will link up as one, and they will be supercharged. It's kind of like when you go to McDonald's and you get your order supersized, where you're going to get supercharged. It's going to make holy laughter look like child's play. And if you're into spiritual experience, you got it. If you're there, maybe we won't be. <laughs> but, you know, whoever's there at that time. So, this is serious stuff. And what I want to show in this clip is how Oprah is just so good at what she does. Notice how she scares everybody with clips about how bad things are in the world. And this was back in 1992. Imagine what she could do today. And she, and she talks about how the principles of Course in Miracles can change the world. And the clip that she shows, if you'll notice, in the background, you'll hear John Lennon's song, Imagine. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Maybe someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. You can actually hear that in there. And that is weaved amidst the crisis. And then Oprah goes, so what can we, you know, I forget exactly what she said, but she says, so what's gone wrong? What can we do? We have our guest today, Marianne Williamson. So I want to show you this clip just to show you how she's manipulating people. But I need to suggest that we're being manipulated by people like Rick Warren, Leonard Sweet, and others who probably in all sincerity think that they have an upper hand on what's really going on. Um, I'll just read you uh, one quote from uh, Leonard Sweet that I think captures where Christian leadership is today. Leonard Sweet did small group workshops with Rick Warren at Saddleback Church and in Atlanta, Georgia a number of years ago. Leonard Sweet has been you know, featured in many Christian programs. He is, he's speaking to the leadership of many Christian denominations at the highest level. Listen to what he does in his book, Aqua Church. He quotes a hymn, Jesus, Savior, pilot me over life's tempestuous sea. 
unknown waves before me roll, hiding rock and treacherous shoal, chart and compass come from thee, Jesus, Savior, pilot me. Well, come on, Warren, what's wrong with what's wrong with Leonard? Sweetie just quoted a hymn. Okay, listen to what he says right after that. He quotes Tehard de Chardin. Let me just give you a couple of Chardin's quotes. Tehard de Chardin said, a general convergence of religions upon a universal Christ who is fundamentally who fundamentally satisfies them all seems to me the only possible conversion of the world and the only form in which a religion of the future can be conceived. What I am proposing to do is to narrow the gap between pantheism and Christianity by bringing out what one might call the Christian soul of pantheism or the pantheistic aspect of Christianity. He also says the cross still stands, but this is on one condition and one only, that it expands itself to the dimensions of a new age and cease to prevent itself to us primarily or even exclusively as the sign of victory over sin. So here's Leonard Sweet quoting a hymn, I'm a Christian, um, and then he quotes this from Teilhard de Chardin. I think this represents a lot of what we're seeing in Christian leadership. Chardin says, Christ is in the church in the same way as the sun is before our eyes. We see the same sun as our father saw, and yet we understand it in a much more magnificent way. That's it. These guys are in the same boat that I was in when I was in the New Age. There's new revelation, new truth. Hey, God couldn't tell people about quantum physics back in the first century. They wouldn't have understood. Now we're getting all these scientists, we're getting all this information, and what we're realizing is that God is in everything. Well, he's not, and we'll go into that, but I want, I want to, if we could do that clip right now. Uh, I want you to, it's about a four minute clip uh, on the Oprah Winfrey program in 1992. Sorry, we only have one screen. I'm supposed to be able to do my job without asking you if I can. 
That dude is supposed to be able to wait with his car without you ripping him off. Everything's supposed to be different than what it is. It's supposed to be. But what's gone wrong? My guest today is Marianne Williamson. Many of you know who she is because thousands of people every week, poor people and rich people and lots of celebrities, go to hear Marianne Williamson speak in Los Angeles and also in New York City. And what she talks about is based on a set of books. Many of you have heard about them called A Course in Miracles. Marianne has become a teacher, a leader in the philosophy that uh, I personally know could change the world. I believe that in my heart. And she has now written her own book. The book is called A Return to Love. Now let me just say this, that every day I have guests on this show, and I'd say at least three out of five times during the week, those guests come on the show with a book. I've read many books over the years. I have never been as moved by a book as I have by Marianne Williamson's book called A Return to Love. So moved, in fact, that I went out and bought a thousand copies. And uh, we'll be giving you all the copy before you leave here today. But, I, I, I really do believe that the message in the book, Return to Love, is, is what we all need so much in our lives. And that's why I cannot, if it sounds like I'm trying to hype the book, I really am. Because I believe that it's so, so important. And for the first time, you could open a book and actually see some answers. So I, I first of all, I, I feel blessed that you're here and that you came to write the book. So you can really see some answers. What's gone wrong? Slaying Christ has no meaning. You can say love all the way till the cows come home, but if that love is blaspheming our Lord, which is basically what's going on here, and it's another God, you're going after another God. Um, it's kind of hard, I think, for some of us that have been watching this for a long time to, to see people falling or some of the books and some of the teachings that are coming through the church right now. But I think one of the things that I hope this conference does is it will put sort of like a, a calling upon you, not to just, if you have a friend that's reading Jesus Calling, get up to speed on it. And don't just, you know, I've seen this sometimes where people will say, oh, that's a horrible book, you know, get rid of it. That's not going to work. Ask good questions. Jesus asked good questions. Thomas Nelson and Sarah Young have literally removed material that I brought up in my book, Another Jesus Calling. They have, for instance, um, Sarah Young said that she was inspired by the book God Calling to write her book, Jesus Calling. Well, the book God Calling was a channeled New Age book that I had when I was in the New Age, and uh, John Ankerberg and John Weldon in their Encyclopedia of New Age Beliefs published by Harvest House label God Calling a channeled New Age book. <coughs> In the new editions of Jesus Calling, you will no longer find that God Calling is a treasure to me, unquote, Sarah Young. The messages that she got from Jesus, ten times she says the word message or messages in her introduction, that she got from Jesus, that she wants to share with you, the reader, the word messages are all gone. They've been wiped out. Now it's what Sarah Young gleaned with her Bible open. It's unbelievable how Christian readers are being manipulated by Thomas Nelson and Sarah Young. That's just the tip of the iceberg. The most amazing thing in Jesus' calling is that um, he says, the last thing that I said before I ascended into heaven is I'm with you always. No, that, that, was, uh, that was in Galilee. That was at the end of Matthew. The last thing that he said was you're going to be my witnesses. That was on the Mount of Olives. That's in her devotional Bible next to the Word of God. That is clearly not Jesus Christ contradicting himself. And in the 10th anniversary edition of the book, they changed it. He said, after my resurrection. But now I've noticed in Costco, they realize nobody really cares, so they're back to the other one. They're just selling in those books. Whenever you see books piled a mile high at Barnes & Noble or Costco, and now even in your Christian bookstore, be suspicious. I'm sorry, 25 shelves of Beth Moore with not one warning in any of her books about what's going on today. You can quote the, the, the scriptures about deception, but if you don't do the practical application, I'm remembering a quote from Roger's book with Carol Matriciano, The Evolution Conspiracy. They quoted, uh, I think it was Martin Luther, and, and, and basically it said, if you confess Christ 
But if you are not addressing at that moment what the devil is attacking in the church, then you're not confessing Christ. You're just having a Bible study. I'm getting a little bit short on time. I'm going to go through a little bit of this. But this booklet, Be Still and Know That You're Not God, I think is the most succinct presentation of what I've said to show you how this thing is leached into the world and into the church. There's, a, there's an amazing line in Psalm 144. It talks about strange children and their right hand of falsehood. And I've read that psalm many times. It was just in the last couple of years. I went, wait a minute. The right hand of God is, is exalted. It's his power. It's his authority. Jesus sits on the right hand of God. What's the right hand of falsehood? It's Jesus calling. It's the purpose driven life. It's a lot of the stuff that we're looking at that looks like it's the right hand. It looks like it's from God, but it's not. But if you don't know your Bible, if you're not studying the Bible, this stuff's going to fly right past you. And I know that there was one woman who said that she finally realized that she was reading Jesus Calling all the time and not reading her Bible. And that was a big, a big kind of like aha moment for her. She was becoming dependent on that. And let me just tell you, we know that people have told us that there's a spirit that's attached to that book. It makes you feel good. It makes you, it, there's a lot of flattery. Did Jesus flatter people? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, if you, if you look in your concordance under flattery, Flattery's not too good. It says the Antichrist will corrupt by flatteries. It also says the Antichrist, by peace, shall destroy many. Gary and Roger talked about peace plans and the peace. Maitreya. How many here know who might have heard of Maitreya? Okay. He's been around a long time. He says that he is Christ, that he's been here. He was officially announced in newspapers around the world in 1982. He's never left. He's, he's talked about by his... Um, John the Baptist, Wayshore, Benjamin Krem, major venues. Krem's been on coast to coast radio. This guy's never gone away. And Benjamin Krem says that Maitreya is the Christ. And I think Maitreya is certainly a prototype for the coming false Christ. And he says that Maitreya is the universal Christ, that all religions will worship the universal Christ, and that Christians will be headed up by the Master Jesus in Rome. He will occupy the throne of St. Peter. I thought that was pretty interesting with the stuff that we were, what we heard last night. So in other words, the Master Jesus is going to be one of those that comes with the Christ. It says when Christ comes, his angels will come with him. The counterfeit, as I've described in uh, False Christ Coming, is that the masters of wisdom come with Christ when he comes, and judgment comes with him, so this thing will come down fast. But the Master Jesus will be in Rome, heading up the Christian church in their adoration and worship of the Christ, the universal Christ. So this is all um, pretty sobering as we watch all this stuff coming into place. And uh, in this book, I'll just go briefly give you some of the examples. 1935, the book God Calling Two Women in England um, claimed to have received special messages from the living Christ um, one of the messages that she got from the living Christ is, wherever the soul is, I am. Man has rarely understood this. I am actually at the center of every man's being. Um, Norma Vincent Peale, on page 40 of The Power of Positive Thinking, tells his millions of readers, God is in you. Uh, Pierre Teilhard Chardin, we've talked about. The Course in Miracles, we've talked about. M. Scott Peck, in 1978, if you want to know the closest place to look for grace, it's within yourselves. If you desire wisdom greater than your own, you can find it inside you. To put it plainly, our unconscious is God, God within us. We were part of God all the time. Maitreya said, my friends, God is nearer to you than you can imagine. God is yourself. God is within you and all around you. Shirley MacLaine, in her book, Out on a Limb. By the way, in the book, Jesus Calling, the Jesus of Jesus Calling says, don't hesitate to go out on a limb with me. It's almost like mockery. Also tells you to take the road less traveled, which is M. Scott Peck. Leonard Sweet in his book Quantum Spirituality. Quantum Spirituality bonds us to all creation as well to other members of the human family. This entails a radical doctrine of embodiment of God in the very substance of creation. Betty Eating Embraced by the Light, some people might remember that. Um, Eugene Peterson, by the way, in the message, the word Lord, you can't find the word Lord. And guess how he refers to Jesus Christ? The Master Jesus. The Master Jesus. The Master Jesus gets demoted. Yeah, he throws in a few things that, 
The Message is a very dangerous book. If anybody thinks that that's something you can quote arbitrarily, you know, I, I'm shocked at some of the stuff that's in there. As a matter of fact, instead of in earth as it is in heaven, in Eugene Peterson's Lord's Prayer, he says, Jesus says, as above, so below. That's an occult saying. I knew it when I was in the New Age. It's one of the most heinous occult sayings you can find. And he puts that right in the mouth of our Lord. And most people are just like, well, I, like, I really like the way the message says this. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Henry Nouwen is quoted a lot. Uh, Henry Nouwen in his book Here and Now, the God who dwells in our inner sanctuary is also the God who dwells in the inner sanctuary of every human being. Rick Warren in The Purpose Driven Life, he quotes the New Century Version Bible. He rules everything and is everywhere, speaking about God and is in everything. Robert Schuller, Rick Warren's mentor, um, in a November 3rd um, talk at the Crystal Cathedral, he said, the imminence of God means here, in me, around me. Yes, God is alive and he is in every single human being. Sarah Young, Jesus Calling, I mentioned that. Uh, Rhonda Byrne in The Secret, You Are God in a Physical Body. Um, and I'll just, well, in the shack, God, this is Jesus in the shack. God, who is the ground of all being, dwells in and around and through all things. He also, in the shack, talks about the quantum stuff. He talks about fractals. And, and he has a new book out about Eve. Christianity is being dismantled right in front of our eyes by people calling themselves our leaders. And then Glenn Beck, in 2011, in his book, The Seven Wonders That Will Change Your Life, he says, if God is everything and everywhere and inside everyone, then I figured he had to be inside me too. I wasn't here by accident. I was part of God's plan. I had to respect that plan or at least not resent it. I had to respect myself as part of him. My father's granola hippie new age spirituality, which I actually agree with. But he does such good political commentary on so many things. Fine. Recognize that he's a Mormon new ager. And keep that in mind because all these people are going to be holding hands when we have the coming revival and are repenting about everything except the blasphemy of God. Galatians 3, 26 to 28. Paul says the, to the believers, ye are all one in Christ. This is a really important distinction. Ye are all one in Christ. When you believe, you accept what the finished work on the cross of Calvary, and you are a believer, we are one in Christ, but Christ is not in every one. Okay, and I make that really clear in this booklet. Let me just do that, wrap up by just reading some quotes from Scripture. That, and the one that I think is most significant is Psalm 39.5. And I know we all have different Bibles. Um, people say, are you King James only? I said, I've only used the King James. So when I was in the New Age, one of my clients, when I was a social worker, his mom sat down with me. She was probably in her mid-70s. She said, Warren, do you, do you love the Lord? And I said, oh, yeah. She says, tell me about him. Well, I told her everything that I believed, and she was like, oh, my God. You know, she couldn't <laughs> contain herself. She said, excuse me just a minute. She went and got a big blue King James Bible and brought it to me. That's what I had when we finally broke through, when I was at a bookstore in Hermosa Beach, California. And our New Age trip had been going really well, but all of a sudden we had to deal with something that felt evil, but there's no evil in the New Age. Johanna Michelson's book, The Beautiful Side of Evil, laid it all out for me. And as I was reading the book in the bookstore, a mentally ill guy that was on the street came into the bookstore and started screaming at me, are you going to buy that book? What are you doing with that book? And I went, does evil know I'm reading about it? Can evil orchestrate someone to come off the street and try to keep me from reading about truth? And the answer was yes. I had spiritual warfare before I was a Christian. I was persecuted before I was a Christian. So what does that say about us that are believers? So if you depart from evil, you make yourself pray. And it's, you know, it's not easy being, there's a cost to being a Christian, but God uplifts us, he keeps us in, a, in, in, his, in his arms. And, and he will carry us through whatever we have to go through in the future. Let me just do a few of these quotes. So Psalm 39, five, and I said all this because of King James, verily every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Higher self, God's self, Christ's self, you, true self, you name it. Mm -hmm. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, Deuteronomy 5, 7. No other gods. The God in everyone is another God. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, Isaiah 42, 8. Shall, man, shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods, Jeremiah 16, 20. 
Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, Ezekiel 28.2. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. The New Age says, get out of your ego and get to you and awaken to your God self. That's the biggest ego trip of all. You're leaving your ego and you're saying that you're God. I mean, there's a lot of mockery that goes on in this stuff. Anyway, I'm not gonna, I'll just read this last one. Um, that you, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another, 1 Corinthians 4, 6, and 2 Corinthians 4, 5, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake, 2 Corinthians 4, 5. My conclusion, my testimony, is that I didn't know the Bible. I, had, I was in a lukewarm kind of you know, liberal church when I was a kid, and I left it when I went to college, didn't even think about it. All that happened to me was described to a T in the Bible. Everything. Everything I've read in the Bible is absolutely describing what is going on in today's church. And yet those of us, I mean, I've watched, I've watched people like Roger just be cast out of their offices and, and just sent to the sidelines because of his willingness to tell the truth. I've got friends who were missionaries he was a missionary in uh, Scotland and he was told we're not paying you to do discernment you're just supposed to be a preacher he said that is what I do and so he refused to do that and he ended up doing weed eating in central California but he has a great website and I'll just do this quickly Spiritual Research Network Chris Lawson you've got Rogers and Gary's websites Lighthouse Trails has a wealth of information if you go to Lighthouse Trails Publishing or their blog they've published all these booklets these booklets are really like Cliff's Notes on the End Times. And you can read just a short 14 to 18 days thing on Rick Warren's Daniel Plan or on Oprah Winfrey's New Age Christianity, Periscope, um, Discernment Ministries, uh, Oral Stein Campus here, he's involved with Discernment Ministries. Um, also, uh, Guarding His Flock, Larry DeBrine, Deception in the Church, and on and on. But uh, you're not going to find our books in Christian bookstores. You're not going to hear... Uh, it's too much on the radio. Uh, Gary and I just happened to be on Jan Markell almost within a couple of weeks of each other just recently. You can go to those programs. But um, it's happening, folks. And I think uh, Pastor John said it best, and I'm going to talk about that later today. We have to stand in the face of this. We have to stand. The world is moving forward with its agenda. We are standing in God's truth. Thank you very much.